All right, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about pre-flop strategy. Um, so specifically today I'm going to talk to you about cold four betting pre-flop. And um, this is a strategy that um, I use like in my play deeper in tournaments. I don't use it, um, I don't use it uh, very often because it's one of those situations that appears uh, quite infrequently. But it's a situation where, uh, let's say for example, a player raises from early position and then another player free bets from mid to late position. And you wake up with a hand, let's say um, mediocre hand such as sixes, in uh, late position or in the blinds. And uh, you just feel like um, the, the three better in this position um, is weak and he thinks, and he's going on the same information where he, he thinks the original raise is weak. This is a good position to put in the, the fourth bet and um, try and take the action away pre-flop. Um, this doesn't work so well in tournaments where the stacks are deep because you'll find yourself being in positions where players are going to call a lot and if you're out of position you're going to find yourself in a lot of difficult spots whereas when you're in position uh, you're going to you're going to be um, find it a lot easier to play um, I've got a specific hand to tell you about that which was which I played in the World Series main event this year um, it was towards the end of the day so blinds were 200 400 and I had about 45,000 so just over 100 big blinds and um, that it was open to a thousand by a um, loose player under the gun and it was called by a middle position player and called again by a player in the cutoff and now the player on the button uh, decides to free bet to 4,100 um, the player on the button is a very loose aggressive uh, Scandinavian player and uh, so it's folded around to me in the big blind now and in the big blind I wake up with uh, Jack Deuce offsuit but I look and I decide that um, the big blind is definitely, I mean, the uh, button is definitely um, free bet and light here. And I felt like um, the under the gun's opening range is a lot wider than uh, the top, even 5% of hands. And I felt like um, by four betting here, I'd be able to get him to fold a lot and be able to just take down um, nearly 10,000 that's in the pop here pre flop without risking. Uh, by only risking uh, 10k, I felt like it was going to work a lot of the time, and um, so I went for it, and I four bet to just over 10,000 actually. Um, it was actually quite interesting actually because the under the gun opener folded, but the guy in second position actually called, which set off alarm bells in my head, thinking that maybe he was trapping with aces or kings preflop, but he was. Uh, he was a recreational player who hadn't folded much like throughout the day, so I've just felt like um, so yeah, it was folded back. It was folded back round, and um, the original button opener folded. Um, the the button three better folded. So uh, the flop ended up coming ace ten four, and I c bet to I c bet um, five thousand five hundred because I felt like on this board. Um, he's going to be. He's going to have called pre-flop with a lot of um, a lot of pairs. I feel, and uh, I felt like he was set mining quite a lot. I didn't feel like he'd have many big aces in his range, other than, of course, the hand he's trapping with, such as aces or kings. Or I didn't feel like he'd have ace king a lot either in this spot. So I felt like betting here would um, betting five thousand five hundred here into a pot of twenty k would get my. It would it would do the same trick. It would do the same job as betting twelve thousand here. So um, I bet I bet five thousand. He folded, he folded, and I won the hand. Um, so in summary, the reason I called for I four bet in that spot was because I thought both the opener and the uh, three better were weak. So I felt like um, I would be able to take down a lot of money pre flop without actually having to see any of the five cards on the board.